counsel? I have no further questions. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Velasco. Good afternoon. You mentioned that you saw nothing inappropriate between Mr. Jackson and young boys, is that correct? Correct. Are you aware that he had unrelated young boys sleep with him alone in his room? Objection. Beyond the scope. Calls for speculation, without foundation. Sustained. Do you think it is appropriate for young boys to sleep in a man's bed when they are unrelated to him and he is an adult? Objection. Sorry. Objection. Sustained. Mr. Velasco, did you ever see, well, let me back up. Were you permitted to go into Mr. Jackson's room when the door was closed? I don't recall. Were you permitted to go into Mr. Jackson's room anytime you wished? No. So can I safely say that you were not aware of what Mr. Jackson did in his room when the door was closed and he was in there with somebody? Yes, of course. All right, thank you. No further questions. No further questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. Call your next witness. Yes, sir. The defense will call Joe Marcus. Please remain standing. Face the clerk and raise your right hand. I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. Joseph Marcus. J-O-S-E-P-H. M-A-R-C-U-S. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me one second, your honor. Mr. Marcus, how are you? Very well, thank you. All right, what is your current employment? Currently employed at Neverland Valley Ranch as the property manager. And when you say, property manager, what are your duties? My duties range from, maintaining the property. There are multiple supervisors that I supervise on a daily basis, from the zoo, to the amusement park, to the maintenance of the property, to the irrigation, just the actual properties. All right. And when you say, property manager, are you sometimes referred to as the ranch manager? Yes. So you are the, at the top of the organizational chart as far as the ranch is concerned, is that correct? Right under the top, yes. Right under. At the very top would be Mr. Jackson, I take it? That's correct. And you know Mr. Jackson? I do. How long have you known Mr. Jackson? About 18 years. Okay. Now, the ranch that's called Neverland Ranch, was it always called Neverland Ranch? No, I believe it was called Sycamore Valley Ranch before. And who owned the ranch before Mr. Jackson did? A gentleman by the name of Bone, William Bone. Mr. Bone. Yes. Did you work for Mr. Bone at Sycamore Valley Ranch before Mr. Jackson owned the property? Yes, I did. Did your father work for Sycamore Valley Ranch before Mr. Jackson owned the property? Yes. What was your father's job? I believe he was the property manager at that time. So the bailiff is getting up to tell you. Talk. Oh, I apologize. Don't apologize. Every single witness has had that problem and the lawyers do from time to time. We have to get very close to the microphone to be heard. Okay. So your father was the ranch manager at Sycamore Valley Ranch, is that correct, or for Mr. Bone? Yes. And you worked at the ranch for a period of time yourself, Sycamore Valley Ranch, correct? Very briefly, yes. What did you do while you were there? I worked in maintenance department. All right, and after Mr. Jackson bought the ranch, did you continue on as an employee? Yes. And what were your job assignments, or your job position when Mr. Jackson took over the ranch? I actually transferred to security. Okay. Now, did Mr. Bone have a security department? No. He was not a celebrity? No. What did Mr. Bone do? I believe he was in land development. Okay. Real estate and? Real estate, yes. That sort of thing? All right. Now, did the main building? The main buildings, which would be the residence itself, the portion attached to it that now has the garage and Mr. Jackson's office in it, the guest house with the four guest units and the arcade building, were those buildings all there when it was Sycamore Valley Ranch? Yes. The lake, was the lake there? Yes. And there were irrigated pastures around the main house? There were. 
Since Mr. Jackson purchased the property, have there been improvements to the property? Yes. Can you tell us what improvements? The number one main improvement would be the trains. There are two trains. There's a steam train as well as a 24 gauge train. There's also an amusement park, a zoo, a theater, the train depot. There's a teepee area that is also a water fort area. All right. Was the theater in existence? No, Mr. Jackson built that. All right, so that was another addition? Yes. And at the time that, let me withdraw that. Let me ask you about the trains, because we've heard testimony about the trains. You said there are two different trains. Let's take the smaller one. Can you describe that train? It's a small, I believe it's on 24 gauge tracks. It's three cars that hold approximately 40 to 50 people, and that's really the description. All right, have you ever been to the zoo in the city of Santa Barbara? Yes. Have you seen the train there? Yes. Is it similar to the one? It is. All right, so adults can sit in it, but it's a fairly small train? Exactly. And when the engineer sits behind the engine, the engineer is, sits above the engine. Exactly. All right, that train. The tracks for that train go from where to where. Can you tell us? From the Golden Gate. I'm going to object. Relevancy. Overruled. From the Golden Gate to the zoo area, throughout the property. It stops in front of the theater as well as the amusement park and travels all the way back to the zoo and back to the main house. So you can do a round trip from down near the main house and come back? Exactly. By the way, when you mention the Golden Gates, let me just ask, is that the gate that's black with gold on top of it? It is, the secondary gate. The big fancy Neverland gate, right? Exactly. Is that gate locked? I'm sorry? Is that gate locked? No. If, if you're driving in a vehicle, anywhere from a golf cart, to a car, to an SUV, to a truck, is there an automatic trip to open it? There is. So it doesn't require anybody to give approval or manually do anything, correct? The only thing that bicycles, it doesn't pick up bicycles or motorcycles. All right, as far as, and then there is a manual way to open it. There is. For a motorcycle, and is there a way around the gate if you were on foot? Yes. Or on a bicycle, for that matter? Yes. So that gate does not effectively lock anybody in so they can't get out, is that right? No. Now, the main gate is about how far from the Golden Gate? It's probably a half, a quarter to a half a mile. So you go down a road, and you end up down at Figueroa Mountain Road by the main gate, correct? Yes. And that gate is operated by the guard, the security officer who's posted at the gate, is that correct? That is correct. And that's both for coming in and going out, the guard will open the gates. Yes. Adjacent to the gate is what kind of fencing? It's a three-rail split, split three-rail fence. Split rail, kind of rough wood fence? Right. There's nothing to prevent somebody from going over it or going through the bars. No. All right, you were talking about the trains. The other train on the property is what kind of train? It's a refurbished steam train locomotive. Was it at one time a working train? I believe it was. Okay, and so that's on bigger tracks? Yes, 36 gauge. I'm sorry? 36 gauge. All right, and those tracks go from where to where? From just adjacent to the main house where the train depot is on the hill, to the, to the zoo area also, and then there's a turnaround at both ends. All right, so instead of doing a loop or a round trip, that one you have to do a turnaround? No, it's a loop at both ends. Oh, it is a loop? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, so you could do a round trip by sitting on it and doing a loop back? Yes. Okay, you mentioned the train depot being up on the hill, correct? That's correct. If you were facing the house from the parking lot, or I shouldn't say, parking lot, but from the parking area, the driveway right in front, and you're standing facing the front door, what direction are you facing? North, east, south or west, if you know, or some variation? East. You're facing east? From the door of the train depot? No, I'm sorry, the main house. If you're standing in front of the door. 
Yes. You're about to knock on the door. Okay. What direction are you pointed? North or northwest is the train depot. Okay. You're facing the house. You're facing north? North. Facing north. So the train depot. Is west. Is west. That's to your left. Okay. So the train depot. What's in the train depot? There's artwork, pictures of trains, small scale trains. There's some Disney characters, some of the old, there's an old violin. There's also just a lot of different neat little artwork for people to look at. All right. I was going to say this is some place where visitors are often taken or allowed to go. Yes. To see things? There's candy and there's video games, and it's a working train depot. All right. So it it looks almost like a museum inside, wouldn't you say? Yes. You have been there at the ranch when large numbers of children, and adults for that matter, have been invited to come in groups, is that correct? Objection. Leading. Overruled. That is correct. And when that occurs, are the air the children, and the adults for that matter, permitted to go to the train station? They are. Is that an area that gets a lot of attention from the kids? It does. It's, yes. All right. And the kids usually are allowed to ride on the train as well, is that correct? Yes. All right. You mentioned that Mr. Jackson also added the amusement park, correct? Yes. And can you describe the amusement park? It's, it consists of about 16 rides, from small, young children rides all the way up to amusement park-sized rides. All right. So it's the sort of amusement park you'd see. It looks like a piece of perhaps Disneyland or something, is that correct? That's correct. All right. So you have the smaller rides, you got the rides for the bigger kids and for adults and so on? Yes. All right. And in addition to that, you said there's a theater. Where's the theater? Just adjacent or west of the amusement park. And the amusement park and the theater are in what direction from the house? North. So you go, from the house, north on a little road and it will take you up to the theater, amusement park area. Is that correct? Exactly. Or you can take one of the other trains to get there? The trains, that's correct. About how far is it from the back of the house to the main residence? In other words, to the theater or the amusement park? Probably a quarter, quarter of a mile. All right. So did, Mr. Jackson also added a zoo. Can you describe the zoo? It consists of, do you want a rundown of the animals or just? Sure. A general description of the facility and the animals that are in it. Yes. There's a tiger facility. Also an elephant facility. A reptile department. A small petting zoo for the children. Different animals that you can actually get up and be hands-on with. And two orangutans. Giraffes. And that's. Mr. Bone didn't have any of those there? No. Just horses. There's also horses. There are horses? Correct. Are there people who are hired to be the handlers or the trainers, caretakers of these various animals? Yes. Are the animals, in your experience, without going into a lot of detail unless we need to, are the animals well taken care of? Yes. And do you have people, for instance, who are specifically there to take care of elephants in? Exactly. And as far as horses, you've got people for the horses and so on? That is correct. All right. You mentioned the teepee area and the water fort. What are those? They're more of a fun area. The water fort is set up with water cannons and water balloon launchers. That's mainly for water fights. And just adjacent to that or north of that is, there's three teepees with a nice big fire ring for maybe just hanging out at in the evening time. You said a fire ring. You're trailing off just a little bit. It's the end of the day, end of our day, anyway. You said a fire ring? Fire ring in between the three teepees. Talking about a place where you can have like a campfire? Exactly. All right. Are there any clocks at Neverland? Yes. More than one or two? Yes. About how many clocks do you think there are at Neverland? Interior or exterior? Let's take exterior first. Six. Five or six. Okay. Let's start with the clock that's on the hill just to the west of the guest units. Yes. And we've had a picture of it here in court. It looks like it has flowers around it? Yes. Do you have any idea how big that clock is? Anybody ever measure it? I don't know that off the top of my head. In any event, 
Can you see this clock in the front of the house? Yes. Can you see it from where the guest units are? Yes. Okay. And is that clock generally right? Yes. Okay. It's maintained by somebody in the clock department, I take it? Yes. Or somebody in the maintenance department, is that right? That is correct. Now, right up on top of the hill next to the big flower clock that you can see there is also a big clock on a stand, is there not? Yes. And if you're in the area of the train station, can you see that clock? You can. The, down by the little train, that was the big train station. Going down to the little train station, which is just across the bridge from the main house, is there also a clock? Yes. And can you describe that? It's a two-face. You can see it from the south as well as the north side. There's two faces on it. It's a hanging clock, about two feet in diameter. All right, so it's a big clock? Yeah, two to three feet. Now, let's just take the year 2003, from February to March. Were both sides of that clock working? Yes. Subsequent to that time, did one side of that clock stop working? It's a possibility. I don't recall. Are both sides working now? I believe so. All right. There's also another clock directly behind the house. Is that right? Yes. It's on like a lamppost? Right out the back door. Yes. And is that a big clock? It's fairly big. All right. When you say right outside the back door, can you explain where it is with relation to the back door of the residence where people might go in and out of the kitchen and eating areas? If you were walking out the back door towards the arcade, you would pass it on your left, as well as if you were coming from the arcade going towards the guest units you would also pass it. Pretty much if you go out the back door and look over there, you can see it, is that correct? Yes. Then, did I cover six clocks? I'm not sure. Is there another clock I missed? There's another clock on top of the train depot, on the roof. Okay. Are there any clocks out at the amusement park? There is, a four-face clock at the amusement park. Okay. Now, other than those outside clocks, are there also clocks inside the house? Yes. Are there clocks inside the house in the areas where the ranch guests can see them? Yes. Can you tell us, in the area, the dining area where there's a bar, dining bar, and people can sit there right adjacent to the kitchen, are there any clocks that were visible from that vantage point? I believe there's four that are visible from that, from the bar area. Okay. Are there other clocks in the living room and other main parts of the house? Yes. All right. Now, I took you back to, back to before Mr. Jackson bought the property and just up to the point that you had gone to work there, or switched your employment to Mr. Jackson's company or his employment. What jobs did you have over the years from the time that you started to now that you're ranch manager? I've worked in the maintenance department as well as security. So tell us about maintenance, to start with, briefly. Is that the first job you had was in maintenance? Yes. What did you do? Maintaining anything from electrical to plumbing, lighting, just the whole gauntlet of maintaining the property. All right. So as ranch manager now, you've got a pretty good idea of what it means if you tell somebody to go do something, right? Yes. Probably done it yourself? Most likely. All right. And how long did you do that before you went into security? A couple of years. So that would have been about when to when? 89 to 92 or so. 91 or 92, I believe. All right. And then you started in security. And what was your position? Officer. And did you work shifts like everybody else? Yes. All right. How long were you an officer in security? Five years. Okay. So somewhere in the mid-90s you ceased being an officer? Yes. What did you do after that? Went back to maintenance. I couldn't stand the shifts. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't stand the shifts. Okay. So maintenance was a little more regular? Yes. All right. And how long were you in maintenance? A couple more years. And then what did you do? Then I've been in this position since then. So you became ranch manager. And when did you become ranch manager? In 2002. All right. Now, based on your experience at the ranch, are you familiar with the operations of all the different departments? Yes. Do the department heads for all the different departments report to you? Yes. 
Who makes the daily decisions as to let me withdraw it and take out the word daily? Who makes the decisions in general as to what the policies will be in the various departments? Ultimately, it would rest on my shoulders. All right. You go to Mr. Jackson and ask him to approve the various policies and procedures that you're putting into place on the ranch? Sometimes. It depends on what it is. If there's something that particularly impacts Mr. Jackson personally, you would do that. Yes, definitely. Otherwise, you have the authority, as ranch manager, to make sure that everybody does their job and too. Your job is to run things, is that right? That's correct. Objection. Leading. It was. I'll withdraw it. With regard to each one of the departments, what is your function as to the particular departments? Overseeing that the job is completed in a timely fashion on a daily basis. Do you have meetings? Yes. Do you have meetings with all the department heads sometimes? Yes. And do you have meetings with individual department heads from time to time? That's correct. Do you generally deal with the various employees at the lower levels of the hierarchy? Do you deal with them directly or do you tend to deal through their chain of command? A little bit of both. All right, so you, certainly you talk to people, employees? Definitely. All right, now, you were aware in 1993 that there had been a search of the ranch by the Los Angeles Police Department, is that correct? Yes. And there was an investigation by the Los Angeles Police Department at that time, is that correct? Yes. And at some point Mr. Snedden's office and the Sheriff's Department got involved in an investigation in the 93 time period, is that right? I don't recall, but I believe so. Okay. You had contact primarily with Los Angeles police officers at that time? I don't recall. You were interviewed by police officers, either of Los Angeles or Santa Barbara, is that correct? Yes. And did you cooperate with the officers at that time? Yes. And at the time, in 1993, that you were interviewed by police officers you were still working as a security officer at that time, is that right? Correct. So you had given us some approximate dates, but does that, that's within the time period that you had been a police, a security guard, correct? Yes. And at the time you were contacted by law enforcement, had you seen anything at the ranch that was either inappropriate or illegal? Objection. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. During the time that you were a security guard, you had an opportunity to observe activities at the ranch, correct? Yes. And you had gate logs back then, right? Yes. And you had interaction with other security guards, correct? Correct. And you had interaction with your supervisors? Yes. If you saw anything illegal, it was your job to report it to a supervisor, is that correct? Correct. Objection. Leading. Overruled. The, the answer was in, your honor? Yes. Okay, thank you. Did you observe, during the time you were a security guard in the 90s, anything that caused you to report an illegal activity? No. During the time in the 90s up until the time that you were interviewed in 1993 by whatever law enforcement agency it was, did you have occasion to see Mr. Jackson interact with his guests? Yes. How often would you see that? If he was home, probably daily. All right. If he was out and about. Other times when Mr. Jackson would be on tour, and would not be there, is that correct? Yes. Or he might be staying someplace else for some other reason, correct? That's true. During the, let's say, 92, 93 period, in that general area, how often was Mr. Jackson at the ranch, do you recall? I don't recall, I believe he was on tour at that point, but I don't, I'm not 100%. Did he come back to the ranch from time to time during the tour? Yes. And so you had occasion to see him there between 92 and 93, correct? I believe so. All right. And you saw him interact with guests, is that correct? Yes. Did you ever see him do anything inappropriate with regard to any guests, adults or children? No. If you had seen anything inappropriate, would you have reported it or taken it up with your supervisor? Yes. Okay. Now, after the after that period of time, you understood there was an investigation, and after that period of time you continued to work at the ranch, correct? Yes. 
and eventually when you became the ranch manager in 2002, it was part of your job to supervise the security and fire department, correct? Correct. You were aware that you had a security officer by the name of Brian Barron, is that right? That's correct. Were you aware that he was a sworn peace officer? Yes. And Violet Silva was the chief of security at the time you became ranch manager, is that right? Correct. Okay, and had you known Violet Silva the entire time that she had worked there? Yes. Did you have a good working relationship with Violet Silva? I believe so, yes. Okay, did you feel that you had open communications both ways, that she could talk to you, you could talk to her about any concerns? Yes. All right, now, at some point, the Arvizo family came to stay at Neverland Ranch, is that correct? That's correct. And what do you recall about your first contact with the Arvizo family? I believe they were, my very first contact was when Gavin was ill with cancer. Okay, and who was there at the ranch with Gavin? I believe his mother and his father and his two siblings. All right, do you recall having any particular interaction with Janet Arvizo? No. Do you recall having any particular interaction with any of the Arvizos? On their first. On the first visit. No, just seeing them there, that was it. Were the, did you see Mr. Jackson with the Arvizos? If they were out and about, possibly. All right, now, after that first visit, did you have occasion to see any of the Arvizos again? Yes. And what's your next recollection of the Arvizos? My last recollection? You're next. In other words, when did you see them? You don't have to take them one by one. But did you see the Arvizos again? Yes. And after the first visit, who came with the Arvizo children? I believe it was just the mother. The mother and the children. Okay. The next time you recall seeing them, the mother was there? They came with Chris Tucker once or twice. Were any parents with them when they came with Chris Tucker? Not always. So you recall them being there with Chris Tucker, maybe parents. And then do you recall the mother being there again before or after the Chris Tucker visits? Before and after. All right, now, at some point, well, let's put it this way. In February and March of 2003, do you recall the Arvizos being there? Yes, yes. Okay, and during that time period, do you recall who was with the Arvizo children for the most part? Sometimes they were by themselves. Sometimes they were with their mother. The father wasn't around during this period of time? No. During that period of time, did you see anything that suggested that the, any of the Arvizos were being held against their will? All object. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. During February and March of 2003, did you see the Arvizos there on the property? Yes. Did you see the Arvizo kids out and about on the property? Yes. What did you see Gavin and Star, the two boys, doing? Do you mean besides just out having fun, just? Let's start with that. Were they out having fun? They appeared to be having fun. Did you see them doing anything else besides out having fun? They were a little destructive at times. All right. Did you see at any time during February and March 2003, anything that suggested that the Arvizo children wanted to leave and were not being allowed to leave? No. Okay. They seemed to be happy to be there? They did. You said they were a little destructive. Can you give me an example of what you're talking about? Well, they just, they didn't respect property, if you will, from golf carts to, I know that they defaced a few areas on the property, wrote some graffiti, if you will, and just not very respectful. Did you see Janet Arvizo on the property in February and March of 2003? Yes. Did you see her outside of the buildings from time to time? Yes. And what did you see her doing? She seemed to just be enjoying herself. Did you see her talking with other people? Other people. Other, talking with anybody, I suppose. Yeah. Do you recall in particular any particular individuals she was talking with? With the housekeeping staff or with the chefs, Dieter Weisner. When you saw her, I'll come back to that in one second. When you saw her talking with the chefs, did you see her inside the house? Yes. Now, you were in and out of the house yourself, is that correct? That's correct. 
And you had the combination to the doors in the house, is that right? Correct. You had the combination to Mr. Jackson's private room? Correct. If you were going to go into Mr. Jackson's private rooms, I should say plural, go into his suite, as we're calling it, would you knock first? Yes. And how did you regard that part of the house? How did I regard it? It was his space, his bedroom. All right. Were people allowed to just randomly allowed to go in and out of his space? Yes. Okay. Now, was everybody that could get in the house, were they allowed to go into his space? No, not unless they were invited, but. So if you had guests who were staying overnight at the ranch, would they be allowed to come into the house? Yes. And in what part of the house did they come into? Mainly the house was open. It was downstairs, other than his area. All right, so they'd be allowed to come in the kitchen area, the living room, the family room, the library, the dining area? Uh-huh. Okay. There's a crafts room upstairs. All right, and did people often come in and hang out in that family room, kitchen area? Yes. Okay, now, you said that you saw Janet talking with, I think you said the cooks, is that correct? That's correct. Could you see her inside the house? Yes. And where did you see her? In the dining or kitchen area. Did you see her having meals or just sitting and talking, or what did you see? Both. All right. Did you see her sitting at the bar? Yes. You mentioned that you saw her talking with Dieter Weisner? Yes. Where were the two of them when they were talking to each other? In the breezeway, in between the main house and the office or arcade area. Okay. Did you see her talking with Mr. Weisner in the kitchen or family room area at any time? I don't recall. May have, but you don't recall? No. All right. Did Janet Arviso ever seem in any way to you, from what you saw, to want to leave the ranch and she was not allowed to do so? No. Did she ever complain to you about anything? Never. Now, is the, let me withdraw that. Did you ever arrange for transportation for any of the Arvizos to and from any locations outside the ranch? Yes. What arrangements did you make? If it was a phone call, to call for a car service, or I personally took them on more than one occasion off property. Where did you personally take them? I, actually, once, shopping in Solvang. Okay. And? Now, when you went shopping in Solvang, let's take that, first of all, who went with you? Janet Arviso, and I believe it was just the two boys. Okay, and do you know where Develin was? I don't. Okay, so Janet Arviso and the two boys went shopping in Solvang. You drove them, is that right? Yes. And what vehicle did you drive, if you recall? Let's put it this way, was it a ranch vehicle? Yes, it was one of the cars. I'm not sure exactly which one. Now, were you to guard them? No. Did you restrain them in any way? No. Did you prevent them from using the telephone? No. Did you prevent them from talking to anybody? I'm going to object as to relevancy. It's irrelevant unless time is established. I don't know about that. But it's a good point. I can establish the time. What time was this? It was in the afternoon. Do you mean the date? Yeah. Was it in? It was around that. 2003, in February or March. I'm not exactly sure when. Somewhere in the February, March time period? Okay, and, all right, so you took them into Solvang shopping. Did you stand there and watch over them while they were shopping? No, it was mainly just transportation. I was actually at the car while they were out and about. So you drove them, you stayed at the car and they went shopping? Yes. Did you in general, if Janet wanted to go somewhere, Janet Arviso, would she request someone to drive her? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, she didn't actually come with a vehicle, so. So you would then make arrangements for her transportation, is that correct? That's correct. And on this particular occasion, you decided just to do it yourself? Yeah, I believe so. All right, now, during this shopping trip, about how long did it last, do you recall? Less than an hour. Did you tell them, you've got to go back to the ranch, or were they just through shopping? No, they just came back to the car and were ready to go. 
All right. Do you recall what kind of stores they went to, or? I was at the car. All right. And you drove them back to the ranch? Yes. Now, was there ever a time when Janet Arvizo was followed by a positive PR film crew of Michael Jackson? I don't know. On that occasion, nobody followed you to take photographs of Janet Arvizo shopping with her kids, as far as you know, right? Not to my knowledge. Did you see anybody meeting any description like that? No. Didn't see any film cameras or crews or anything, correct? No. Now, you said there was a shopping event. Was there another event where you either took them or went to pick them up or had something to do with their transportation? Yes, I met them at an orthodontist, a local orthodontist in Solvang. All right, excuse me just one second. Do you remember the name of the orthodontist? Yes. And what was her name? Jean Cement. Your Honor, may I put? Let me just make sure. This is in evidence. It's 5020. And may I publish that? May I take a look at that? It's this whole series here. You can take a look at them. There are some that weren't received. That's the sign in front of her office, right? Yes. And where is her office located? It's right off of 246 and 1st Street, possibly. Your Honor, I'd like to have marked for identification. It's been pre-marked as 5030, a map. All right. And I'd like to approach the witness, if I may. All right. May I just stand here and speak loud for a couple questions? All right. Thank you. As you look at that, does that appear to be a map of the Solvang area? It does. Does that appear to have a star on it at or near where Dr. Siemens' office is located? Yes. Okay. Does that accurately depict the area? It does. Your Honor, I'd move admittance of 5030. No objection. It's admitted. May I publish it? Yes. Thank you. This appears to be a commercially prepared map of some sort, is that right? Yes. But where the little star? Okay, there's a star. It's a little more visible on the document than it is on the overhead here. But the little star that I'm circling, is that the approximate location of Dr. Siemens' office? Yes. And I think everybody knows, but just in case, 246 goes right through the middle of Solvang, is that correct? Yes. And Buelton's out that away? Yes. And Santa Inez is out that away. That away, being to the right of the picture, the second, that away, all right. Now, is this doctor's office pretty much right on the corner? Not right on the corner, but very close to the corner of 5th Street and 246. I believe there's one building in front of it, but, yes, it's very close to the corner. And I'd like to go through this series of pictures. There are some that were not admitted and I'm not going to refer to those. We'll start with 5020, which I just had up on the board. All right, I'm going to put up 5021. Does that appear to be the front of Dr. Siemens' office? Yes. And the 246, the main drag in Solvang, you said there's like a building in between the two. It would be over this way to the left, is that correct? Yes. And I'm going to put up now 5022 and ask you, if you're standing in the front of Dr. Siemens office, if that would be the, what I was calling the main drag, 246, that goes through Solvang. That's correct. That's the street where you go 25 miles an hour? Yes. All right. Did you go inside Dr. Siemens' office? Yes. I'm going to put up 5024 and ask you, does that appear to be the reception area? Yes. And when you said, I think you said you went to pick them up. So they were already there when you got there? No, I actually met them there. You met them there? Yes. Were they with anybody when you, anybody from the ranch when you? Yes. Who were they with? Vinny dropped them off. Okay. When you say, dropped them off, what was, what was the story? He brought them to this location, and I met them there to transport them back to the property. Okay. Had they just arrived at the doctor's office? Yes. All right. Did you meet them out in front of the building or? I did. Where did you meet them? On the street. The street we just saw? Exactly. So let's go back to that really quickly. If I may, Your Honor, 5022. So right out there? 
right where that red car is. And did Vinny have a car there? Yes. Were they in the car when you got there? Actually, no, I was there first. Okay, so you were there waiting for them? Yes. And when they showed up, what happened? He left, and I escorted them into the place of business. Were you there to guard them? No. Were you there to keep them from talking to anybody? Objection. Leading. Sustained. Did you have any instructions from anybody to restrict their behavior in any way? No. Did you, were there telephones in the office? Yes. Did you go? What did you do after you? You meet them on the street and then what happened? Just tell us what happened. Walked in, introduced them to the doctor, and I waited in the waiting room, and Mrs. Arviso and the two children were, went into the, not operating room, but the. It seems like an operating room, but. Yes. If you don't like dental work, so you never went back into the back? No. Did you know Dr. Seaman before that? No. Were you sitting in the front room to guard the door so they couldn't leave? Objection. Leading. Overruled. No. Do you know if there was a back way out of the office? I'm sure there was. I didn't actually see it. Did, how long did the Arviso family stay at the dental office? It was probably an hour or two, no more than an hour and twenty minutes. What did you do during that hour, hour and twenty minutes? Read magazines. Okay. When they were through at the office, or they were through in the back doing whatever they were doing, did you meet them in the reception room? Yes. And where did you go from there? Drove them back to the property. Did they complain about getting in the car? No, it was raining quite heavily, so they were running to get to the car. Okay. At any time while you were with them during that period of time, this dental visit, did any of them ever cry out for help? No. Did you see anybody use the phone to call for help? No. Did you hear anybody ask for help from anyone? Not to my knowledge. Was there anything about their attitude or demeanor that made you think that any of the Arvizos were unwilling to be there or unwilling to go back to the ranch? No, they were excited to be there. Okay, this might be a good place to take a break, if it's all right, Your Honor. We'll take our afternoon recess. See you in the morning. Remember it will be a half day tomorrow.